I grew up in a house full of women. I lived most of my young life in a house full of women, all sisters. I had all daughters. I'm married. I have a younger daughter today. Seeing women thrive is one of the most beautiful things that a man can see in his life. As a husband, it's the one thing that I work towards. As a son, it's the one thing that I work towards. As a father, it's the one thing that I work towards. I want to see the women in my life thrive. I want to see them rise above any adversity that's in their life. I want to see them rise above anything that beats them down mentally, that beats them down spiritually, anything that hurts them, that causes them anxiety. I want to see women thrive and overcome. Megan Kelly made this wonderful point. She said, you know, women wanted to think that there was hope and they saw it in another woman. And we've kind of lost sight of the fact that women win when their sons win, that women win when their fathers win, that women also win when their brothers win. And it made this beautiful picture for me, something that seemed kind of far gone, and it was the idea of family. It was the idea that when one of us wins and we are family, we all win. Let me tell you, the, the idea that only those who look like you or sound like you are going to help you in life or assist you in life or cause you to win, it is such a deceptive lie. There is not any deeper, more destructive lie than thinking that someone that looks like you has your back. That's probably what got us here to begin with. We have these identity politics where we look at someone and they think, oh, their identity is a lot like mine. So we trust in them because they look like us. And then we always are let down. In that lie, we've broken our families apart. I'm watching right now online where women are so upset, I'm never going to talk to my parents again. That right there, that right there should show you alone exactly the spirit of the thing that is in the center of what it is that you're following. That you as a family, the people that brought you into this earth, the people that fed you every day of your life, you will just have no relationship with them anymore because they believe differently. If you can't see that as a just a wickedness, that as a wedge that is coming between you and the most sacred relationship that you will have on this earth, then you are deceived. You are utterly deceived. And I understand because I have been there. I spent most of my life deceived, cutting off every single relationship, becoming an island because Satan was in my head convincing me, and I was so easily convinced, that this is where I'll be the most happy. This is where I'll thrive the most once I cut off everybody and I just live here in whatever my desire of the moment is. But let me tell you this, and you know this in your heart, that desire will never fulfill and you will chase it over and over and over and over and over again until your skin has aged, your years are gone, and your days are few. And in that moment, what would you give to go back? To go back and just embrace life, not for its desire, but for its genuine God-given purpose. Let me just sum up the entire Bible. God creates man, gives him free will. Man decides he doesn't want God. Somewhere along the way, God looks down and he finds one person who's righteous and he says, if you do the right thing and you just love me, I will bless you. And through your seed, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. It tells us in the book of Deuteronomy that God keeps his promises with thousands upon thousands of generations with those who love him. The most wonderful thing that you can give to your family line, to your name, to your children and great grandchildren after you is the ability to take God and allow him inside of you to live inside of you, for your body to be a temple in which the creator of the universe can habitate, that he can work through you, speak through you, do incredible things, touch other people's lives through you. And in that process of just simply submitting to him, your children, your grandchildren, your great, great, great grandchildren will be blessed. And God has called all of us according to a great and incredible purpose. And all we have to do is embrace it. And yet we accept the lie that we're nothing. And we need validation from other people to make us feel like we are something. It will never be enough. It will never be enough. No matter how many people nudge you along and tell you, you're on the right path, you're good, keep going. It will never satisfy you. It will never be enough. I believe this with all my heart, that God creates children in the womb to be used in a time that he knows is coming. I believe that the talents that you have, I believe that the gifts that you have were given to you they were threaded into your the very fiber of your being while you were in your mother's womb. See, a lot of people today, they'll tell you that by saying these words that I've said tonight, that I'm judging you, that I'm pointing the finger at you, that I'm saying you are worth less. I'm telling you right now before those lies sink in, you are worth more. You are worth more. You don't have to believe it, but whether or not you believe it, you will receive it. And there will be a moment where you look back and you're able to see it.